Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. Indy Alaska is a groundbreaking series that dives into the lives of people living in the last frontier. Each episode introduces you to colorful characters from around the state. Funding for Indy Alaska is provided in part by Alieska Pipeline Service Company. Catch the latest episodes at alaskapublic.org. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us here at KKM for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting tonight's show. Well, the uh, storm that went through the southeast coast uh, today was quite the wind and rain producer. Uh, wind speeds as high as 76 miles per hour in gusts. They're recorded at Heidelberg, Metlakatla about 55 miles per hour, and then uh, pretty brisk wind gusts also at Craig and Ketchikan. And as far as precipitation goes, uh, two day totals here with uh, Ketchikan picking up 9.88 inches uh, during that period and Shelter Cove nearly seven inches of rain while Annette had just under five inches of rain uh, during that two day period. Moving on to the uh, morning watch and advisory chart here, we've got some wind advisories out for the uh, upper Koyukuk Valley, the southeastern Brooks Range and the Yukon Flats and surrounding uplands area for uh, east and northeast winds. Uh, these are out for tonight until 6 a.m. Saturday for east and northeast winds of 15 to 30 miles per hour with gusts to 45 miles per hour throughout the night tonight. And then early tomorrow morning, those winds will begin to subside. And moving on to the satellite imagery, you can see quite vividly here that uh, wound up storm moving northward off the coast of the Panhandle today. And then another wave uh, coming up behind that. That actually kicked the winds up this afternoon at a net. They had a gust close to 60 miles per hour. But uh, Everything moving northward here, that low center right off the coast, and uh, again, the hurricane force wind warning over Clarence Strait earlier today, that's uh, come down now, but there are gales out for tonight for the entire southeast coast. And then this uh, cloud shield expanding westward, spreading in across the Kenai Peninsula and northern Cook Inlet during the afternoon hours with rain from Yakutat northeastward across the southeast interior up to about Northway. Then you can see some uh, breaks in the clouds and some uh, clearing here over the mid Tanana Valley and up to the north there. And then some more cloudiness here over the northwest, but uh, pretty well dry. Another area low pressure just south of the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, right about in this area here producing rain all the way out to the uh, eastern Aleutians back up across the Pribilof Islands. And the winds coming out of the north there from the Chuck CC right down sweeping around that center, but also some breaks here occurring over the uh, southwest interior and in toward Bristol Bay, looking pretty good out there over the western and central Aleutian areas. And you can see uh, clouds moving from east to west here, band of showers coming across uh, Cook Inlet uh, this morning up to the Alaska Range there, a few isolated showers in that area this afternoon, but uh, clearing out back to the west and then the clouds associated with this low center, about 965 millibars on the center there. And again, still some uh, 
Rain occasionally heavy at times going on this afternoon with the gusty winds across the southeast coast with the main frontal position pushing inland there and then the clear skies or clearer skies up over the central and northern interior areas. But uh, pretty brisk winds, uh, easterlies 15 to 30 miles per hour, gusted as high as 40 or 50 miles an hour at Indian Mountain. And then the western Arctic coast pretty windy as well with point lacing gusts to about 40 miles an hour in that area and then northerlies here from the Chukchi Sea across St. Lawrence Island down across the Perbolofs right into the eastern Aleutian areas there uh, gusting anywhere from 20 to 35 miles per hour and uh, to a lesser extent over the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, rainfall amounts up to uh, nearly a half an inch, inch and a half of rain falling at Falls Pass in the last 24 hours while Cold Bay picked up about four tenths of an inch of rain and then rainfall amounts uh, about two to up one to two tenths across the Perbolof Islands and then lesser amounts back out to the west. Looking at the forecast for tonight, this low is going to track uh, west northwest and come right over central Cook Inlet, but we can considerably there. You can see the gradient uh, really a lot more slack than it was over the southeast coast today. So uh, that'll pull some rain along the North Gulf Coast, especially after midnight periods of rain likely into Prince William Sound. Chance of a few scattered showers, mostly cloudy sky, south central Alaska tonight with some scattered shower activity. Stays uh, occasionally wet up over the uh, eastern interior areas there to about Token Northway. And again, the winds continue there, those high wind advisories out for the northeast interior areas up to 45 miles per hour. Less wind, but some partial clearing here over the southwest interior and still looking pretty breezy here from the Bering Strait southward across the Perbolofs with that low center uh, edging its way a little bit to the east there. But that will keep some showers in over the Alaska Peninsula back out to the west. Uh, pretty good chance of showers for the uh, Unalaska area and the Perbolofs. And then uh, scattered showers and gusty north winds, probably 15 to 25 miles an hour out over the central Aleutians. Lighter winds out to the west toward that area of high pressure. And for the, uh, or actually this low center begins to move into the south there. So that'll nudge some rain northward later tonight. And then into tomorrow, rain becoming showery in the afternoon. But the, uh, again, the rain will increase late tonight and early tomorrow, but the winds will not. Uh, wind will not be a factor with that system and then otherwise a much lighter wind and rain day for the panhandle tomorrow. Maybe some partial clearing in areas there. A few remaining scattered showers, mostly cloudy scattered showers for the North Gulf Coast, South Central Alaska area. This band of moisture advancing west and northwest there. So uh, chances of rain early on over the southeast interior and then that breaking out in the afternoon with some partial clearing. Look for showers right along the Alaska range all the way down to Lake Iliamna in that area. And then this low and this trough, again, kind of coming northward, spreading eastward, should stay to the south of Kodiak Island. Just a risk of a shower along the east side of the island there. It looks like most of the moisture will stay off to the west of the area there with maybe some clearing dry over Bristol Bay, dry with some partly sunny skies here over the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta areas and diminishing winds, but still pretty breezy up here from the upper Yukon Valley westward out toward Kotzebue Sound with uh, could be a fair amount of sunshine going on in these areas back across the uh, Eastern Brooks Range in the North Slope and uh, still breezy on those winds there. Small craft advisories for the Western Arctic coast and not much change here over the Bering Sea, a lot of clouds gusty north winds and showers from St. Lawrence Island all the way down across the Perbolofs to the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. Dry for Adak and Atka with uh, possibility seeing a little bit of sunshine there. And then uh, this system out here to the west uh, will kind of break through that ridge of high pressure for uh, Sunday. And that trough there will kind of keep it showery and unsettled for the western and central Aleutian areas there, while a rather broad trough axis here from this low center south of uh, Sitkanak will keep it also uh, unsettled and showery, and mostly cloudy here over the Bristol Bay area, right up into Norton Sound. Maybe some scattered rain and snow showers there for the Bering Strait, possibly St. Lawrence Island back up to the northwest coast, but dry, a couple of dry days coming up with uh, even less wind here for the northeast interior. But those easterly winds increasing there, especially for the eastern Arctic coast, looking east at 40 knots for Sunday in the forecast up there with small craft advisories and uh, even some gale force winds continuing there for portions of the Arctic coast. And then this next big storm moving northeastward, bringing storm force winds and rain heavy at times back into the uh, southern 
uh, southeast coastal areas there with uh, gale warnings all the way up uh, into the northern areas with rain spreading northward across the panhandle once again. If the uh, looks like this low will track northward just inside of 140 west the way it looks at this point in time. Uh, so look for the storm force winds to return to the uh, southern southeast coastal areas. Otherwise showers, mostly cloudy skies here for Kodiak Island, mostly cloudy with scattered showers across southern Alaska, but uh, Maybe the uh, Susitna Valley, Copper River Basin northward looking pretty good with uh, mostly dry weather and again lighter winds. And for temperatures along the Panhandle, uh, 60 the warm spot in the state today at Annette, 56 at Sitka with 53 in Juneau, 51 with rain at Yakutat, 49 and an increase in the clouds occurring at Cordova, 52 in Valdez. Also, Northern Cook Inlet in the lower 50s. Seward pushed up to 55 degrees and Talkeetna up to 57. Otherwise, uh, Gulcana, a little bit of sunshine today. They reached 49 degrees with uh, lower 40s over the mid and upper Tanana Valley. Mid 30s, mid to upper 30s here over the west central interior areas. Up to the north, Fort Yukon had 32 degrees. Arctic Village at 27, but Bettles uh, reached 42 this afternoon. Ambler at 36. Kotzebue with gust east winds, 42 degrees, and a notably cooler, 30 degrees at Point Hope. Uh, the Arctic coast mostly in the mid-20s there, uh, the entire stretch of the coastline. And uh, 39 at Shishmaref, Buckland had 43. Southern coast of the Seward Peninsula, both Nome, uh, well, Nome had 44 and Gullivan at 43 degrees. McGrath at 41, Galena 37 and Bethel 46 degrees with a 42 degree reading there at Amonic and 45 down at McCoriuk and Gamble on St. Lawrence Island had 37. Out in the Pribilofs with the uh, clouds and rain lower 40s there, mid 40s for the eastern Aleutians as well as the Adak and Atka area, closer to 50 out towards Shimia. Along the Alaska Peninsula we had upper 40s to mostly lower 50s there in that area, lower to mid 50s over Bristol Bay with King Salmon pushing up to 56 degrees and Akiak at 50. Lows for tonight, upper 40s to lower 50s all across the southeast coast tonight. Lower 40s, southern Alaska, upper 30s in the Susitna Valley to lower 30s over the Copper River Basin areas. Coldest here, the Brooks Range with uh, Arctic Village forecasting a low of 4 degrees. Lower 20s here along the Arctic coast with the uh, breezy conditions. Lower 30s here over the southwest interior and lows in the lower to mid 40s for the Alaska Peninsula, the Aleutians and the Bering Sea. Highs for tomorrow. Upper 20s here for the Arctic coast, but teens to and 20s through the Brooks Range area. South of the mountains, though, into the 30s, mid 30s to mid 40s there over the Tanana Valley. Upper 30s across the Seward Peninsula and uh, nearer into the lower 40s here over the southwest interior. Milder over the Bristol Bay area and the Alaska Peninsula looking at highs in the lower 50s, much like the southeast coast. And as far as flying weather goes, look for marginal VFR as that system moves in across the Queen Charlotte Islands. Marginal VFR tomorrow across the southern southeast coast and a band here from about Port Alexander up across Elfin Cove to Yakutat. But uh, definitely a better day here across the entire panhandle, what was seen today. And areas of IFR possible over Prince, over Prince William Sound, especially uh, there for the Western Sound and uh, VFR. Copper River Basin through Cook Inlet down to Kodiak Island. Again, most of that moisture staying off to the east there. VFR across Bristol Bay up into the interior. And uh, marginal VFR along the central and eastern Arctic coast, right along the coastline there with marginal VFR across the eastern Bering Sea. Possible IFR here on the lee side or the uh, windward side of the uh, Lucian Islands there and the Alaska Peninsula improving out to the west. As far as passes go, Anatovic, both Anatovic and Adigan will be VFR tomorrow. And Lake Clark and Merrow also looking good with VFR flying through those passes. Rainy VFR possibly becoming marginal as that band of moisture shifts to the west. Windy marginal VFR, Isabel marginal. And Mentastas marginal VFR, but that'll be improving to VFR by late morning, early afternoon. Tanita VFR, Portage marginal VFR becoming IFR. Chilkoot and White uh, look for a good improvement starting out low and then becoming VFR in the afternoon. Freezing levels about 2,000 feet here from roughly Nome right over to about Eagle. Uh, sloping up to about 4,000 feet here over the southwest interior North Gulf Coast. 6,000 feet over the southern panhandle about two to 4,000 feet out to the west. 
icing threats uh, kind of along the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians here, and then with that moisture flowing southward and those northerly winds from St. Lawrence Island across the Pervilofs. And then this uh, batch of moisture moving west-northwest across the area could be above about 6,000 feet here over south-central Alaska, right up along the Alaska Range there into the upper Tanana Valley. And then with this system pushing by to the south, that'll nudge again some moisture up over the southern southeast coast for some light isolated moderate rime icing, possibly above 6,000 feet. Upper level wind flow chart showing a branch of the jet here kind of coming across the western Aleutians well to the south, uh, upper level low there near Kodiak Island, easterly flow along the North Gulf Coast, upper level ridging over the interior keeping it dry up in that area. And at 9,000 feet, uh, good north to south flow here, 35 to 40 knots across the central and eastern Bering Sea areas, lighter along the southwest coast. And those easterlies uh, still up to 50 knots across the central interior and pretty brisk up over the western Arctic coast, but notably lighter winds for the southeast coast. And that same pattern also showing up about 3, 000, at 3,000 feet, 35 to 40 knot northerlies out here over the eastern Bering Sea areas. Uh, 25 to 40 knot easterlies across the upper Yukon, Koyukuk Valley areas, and then another band of stronger winds on the eastern Arctic coast. Southerlies 25 knots off the coast there, lighter winds over the panhandle, and light and variable winds uh, across this trough axis from the Alaska Range down across Kodiak Island. And as far as turbulence goes, uh, much smoother day over the southeast coast here in southern Alaska looking pretty good. Occasional moderate chop over the north central interior, western Arctic coast, and then down across eastern Bering Sea, eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs all blow about 6,000 feet. And after hangar flying, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling. On behalf of Alaska Public Media and the Alaska Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. This evening our guest is Rob Tasker. Rob has a long and varied career in aircraft maintenance. He started out at UAA where he received his a &P in 1991. Rob has worked for a number of companies in the business including Flight Safety, Era Take Flight, Seaplanes North, and his current company Flytech, which is on the shores of Lake Hood. Along the way, Rob earned his IA and private pilot certificate, where I think he told me he traded 100-hour inspections for flying time. Rob, welcome to Hangar Flying. Great to be here. Rob, winter's on its way. Nights are longer, temperatures are getting colder. Our viewers are pilots, mechanics, aircraft owners, and other aviation enthusiasts around the state. For those pilots, mechanics, and owners out there, what are some of the recommendations on winter flying and taking care of your aircraft? What are some of your recommendations? Well, I would um, recommend people get their winter baffles installed and make sure their breather, the engine breather tube is insulated properly and make sure there's a little vent hole above the end of the breather tube in case the end of it freezes over. Okay. That's very important. And we talked a little bit about the baffles um, and I think you made a, a, a recommendation that people should refer to their POH. And I think the Cessna is one, only one I'm familiar with that says below 20 degrees. Below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, yes. Right. And there's different baffles for different airplanes. Some of them have baffles on the intake. Some of them have them over the oil cooler. And some of them just have them to cover the front of the engine cowling. OK. Um, you also talked about the uh, possibility of primer nozzles plugging up. Yes, primer nozzles, a lot of times you don't use them in the summertime or don't use them much and, and then they can get plugged up with carbon and whatnot from the combustion of the engine and so it's a good idea to make sure those are clear as well. Okay. Wheel pants? Wheel pants are interesting. Um, you wouldn't think there'd be an issue but when snow and ice when get up in there, it can freeze up the brakes and then the brakes don't work hmm. and that can be a problem. Um, one of the things you and I have talked about a little bit was um, preheating. Yes. Your thoughts on that? Uh, preheating is a very good idea. Uh, generally, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit is kind of the rule of thumb. It certainly does not hurt to preheat when it's a little warmer also. There's many different kinds of preheaters are out there. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, it seems to me that you know a plug-in. If you got the, if you got electricity, mm -hmm. a plug-in uh, is probably 
the safest as opposed to, I mean, I've used plugins and Red Dragons, but Red Dragons, you need to keep an eye on. Absolutely. Thoughts on that? Well, the Red Dragon, you got to keep an eye on because you've got a, basically a propane furnace heating up your engine. And the electricity ones, you don't. It's, and they also heat more thoroughly because you can heat each individual cylinder, the oil pan and the case with the electric. You know, someone once told me that there was a, there's another danger with Red Dragons. I never experienced it, but uh, do you run the risk of, um, uh, you know, you've got uh, uh, electric wires in there, which are plastic, you've got plastic and rubber. Is there a danger of melting Ab some of that stuff? Absolutely. I've seen that happen where people melt engine components from the heat coming out of that Red Dragon because it wasn't placed in the right spot. Which stuff it in the uh, cow flaps or what, what's the best thing? Depending on the aircraft, mm -hmm. it might make a difference. Sometimes it's best to shove it in the front of the cowling. Okay. Sometimes up the cow flap. It just depends on what the heat is blowing onto as to what's safe or not. Good, good advice. Um, what about techniques to clear the aircraft surfaces of ice and snow? Well, of course, the best way to do it is to use the proper wing covers and engine covers and tail feather covers. Uh, you can sweep snow and frost off with a broom. Some people like to use a rope. Generally, that's not a good idea because you have antennas and vortex generators and such where a rope doesn't always work that well. Okay. Um, another topic a little different. When, with the cold temperatures, uh, what are your thoughts on possibility of shock cooling, particularly in bigger engines? Well, you just want to make sure you don't descend very quickly. So a slow descent is recommended. And full rich mixture is also good and it helps cool things. Okay. Um, I've got about now less than a minute. Anything else to add? Uh, dress for the weather. It's lots of people, they think they can go flying in their tennis shoes and a light jacket in the wintertime, but you might need to go for a mile walk after you land somewhere because you couldn't land where you thought you wanted to. Or you might spend the night. Or you might have to spend <laughs> the night, and you don't want to get frostbite. Rob, thanks for being on the program. Good advice for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Winter's coming, we know that for sure, and uh, you need to take care of your aircraft. You need to, to uh, Take care of yourself, like Rob says, dress properly, and you need to fly safe. Until next time, uh, uh, fly safe. Welcome back. Well, the sea ice has made a noticeable jog to the south here over the last week with whatever open areas having filled in up to the north and then continuing to increase along the central and eastern Arctic coast and seen some ice, new ice show up here on the northwest coast. And over the next uh, five days, the entire ice edge is expected to move southward 10 to 20 nautical miles, and that'd be by Wednesday. And for the uh, coastal uh, forecast, uh, subtly winds 20 knots here, Lynn Canal along the north coast, but uh, much lighter winds northwesterlies at about 20 down over the southern inside waters along the south coast there are uh, lighter winds in between. And then on Sunday, that next storm uh, coming up to the north, uh, actually this should have been southeast 50 knots here, not 30 knots with uh, 45 knots there out of the south for the south coast and then seas up to 25 to 27 feet. Full gales here along the uh, north coast as well. Easterlies 35 up to the north and then uh, small craft advisory southeast 30 knots in toward Clarence Strait. And for Prince William Sound tomorrow, southeast 25, northeast 10 for Northern Cook Inlet and southeasterlies at about 25 knots here along the east side of Kodiak Island, the North Gulf Coast, east to southeast at about 20 knots. And for Sunday, we've got small craft advisories here for the North Gulf Coast, out of the east at 25, easterlies at about 15 for Prince William Sound, easterly winds 20 knots here, Kodiak Island, the Barrens, Kamishak Bay, north to northeast 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet. Bristol Bay, northerlies at 15 knots, northerlies at 20 knots here across the Alaska Peninsula. Seas running 8 to 9 feet there, but only 2 feet in Bristol Bay. And for Sunday, westerlies at 10 knots or Bristol Bay, but small craft advisories. Northwest winds 30 knots with uh, 10 to 12 foot seas for the Alaska Peninsula. 
And for the Aleutians, uh, lighter winds out here to the western areas, but we've got gales in the forecast here for the central Aleutians and northwesterlies 30 to 35 knots there for the eastern Aleutians. Again, seas running 10 to 17 feet in these areas. And then on Sunday, southwesterlies 20 to 25 knots for the uh, western Aleutians from Adak eastward to uh, Unalaska and Dutch Harbor. We've got northwest winds at 30 knots with seas 11 to 14 feet. And for the southwest coast, to north to northwest, 25, 20 to 25 knots in this area. Pretty stiff breeze out of the north through St. Lawrence Island. Gales here from the northern Bering Sea down across the Pribilofs with 14 to 15 foot seas. And for Sunday, small craft advisory, St. Lawrence Island down to uh, Nunavak Island. And northwest 35, the gales hold over the northern Bering Sea and the Pribilofs northwest at 30. For the Arctic coast, uh, small craft advisories here for much of the coastline, although from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, northeast at uh, 35 knots. Heavy freezing spray for the central and eastern Arctic coast. And then those winds increase on Sunday up to 40 knots on the east side there, 30 knots everywhere else. Uh, again, gales hold here along the northwest capes. And for tonight, again, uh, rain becoming showery, winds diminishing after the gales this evening here over the panhandle. Uh, some of that moisture is shifting up to the northwest over the interior areas there. And the gusty east winds and advisories continue over the eastern interior. But those will begin to diminish uh, early tomorrow morning. And uh, rain changing to showers here over the southern panel as that system slides into the south of the area. Mostly cloudy scattered showers south central Alaska. Most of the moisture with this system staying off the coast. But gusty winds, showers, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, northward to St. Lawrence Island. Mostly fair with some clear skies and sunshine here up in the north, again with the diminishing east winds. And then another big storm rolls up off the southeast coast. Again, storm force winds on the south coast, uh, 45 to 50 knots in the forecast, rain heavy at times. And uh, small craft advisories over the inside waters, otherwise mostly cloudy and showery, less wind up to the northeast. Let's look at the weather. Have a great weekend. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.